This is Rhea. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. Have you ever felt like you were in the wrong place? Like maybe you were meant to live somewhere completely different? Maybe you live on a mountain, but you wonder what it might be like to live on a houseboat. Or maybe you live in a city, but you wonder if country life might be for you. Our story today is about a little pill bug who comes to believe he is meant to live somewhere else, somewhere very different, somewhere underwater. Let's hear it. It's called A Roly Poly Dreams of the Sea. Take it away, Ezra and Fiona. Remember, there are no pictures. You'll have to imagine them in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Okay, Okay, here here we we go. go. It was the middle of a Wednesday afternoon when Bug learned the shocking truth. He'd just finished eating a crinkly leaf on the edge of a school playground when enormous human children appeared above him. This had happened many times before. He was famous among children, not quite as popular as ladybugs, which, in fact, are just fancy-looking beetles. Nor did he enjoy the same status as caterpillars, who have the peculiar habit of turning themselves into something entirely new. Who can compete with that, really? But Bug knew he was much more beloved than ants, who never seemed to do anything interesting at all. Children adored him. Some called him a pill bug. Others called him a roly-poly. He basked in the attention. So often, he had worries on his mind. But when there were children smiling down at him, his worries, his uncertainty, seemed to fade into the background. The children never seemed to want to hurt him, as they occasionally did with spiders. And they didn't love him too much, as they sometimes did with worms. Instead, they gently poked him to see him curl up into a ball. He was more than happy to oblige. And oh, how delighted they were. They were beside themselves with excitement. It's such a trivial action. They'd take turns watching him curl up then waiting, patiently, for him to unfurl himself. Then they'd poke him so he'd curl up once more. It was a game. Bug enjoyed hearing the children giggle. They'd gather in a group and shower him with attention. He loved it. Then, after a little while, they'd move on to something else leaving him radiating with the warmth that comes from being so adored. That's how it always went. But on a very particular Wednesday afternoon, something happened that changed Bug's life forever. It had all started off as it usually did, Several small people appeared above Bug. Look at him! He's so cute! A roll if you touch him. Bug felt a little nudge, and he dutifully curled himself, gracefully, he thought, into a ball. Oh, (laughs) I love him! That's when things took an unexpected turn. We should name him. Bug listened with interest. Children had given him all kinds of names in the past. Roly, of course. Armadillo, he liked that one. Buggy, that had been his nickname as a baby. This time, a child spoke up and said, Let's name him Krusty. Krusty, Bug thought. That's no good. 
He wanted a classy name, something timeless, something dignified. Why, Krusty? said another child, to whom Bug immediately took a liking. Because, said the first child, he's a crustacean. I read about it in my encyclopedia. What's a crustacean? Does that have to do with bread? My mom cuts the crust off my bread, said a third child, chiming in. I like the crust. It's my favorite part, said an endearing child. Bug forgot he was supposed to be cutely rolled up. He uncurled himself and became still, so he could hear everything that came next. Not a crust station, a crustacean, like a shrimp. Wait, what? He doesn't look like a shrimp to me. You mean like an oyster? No, the well-read child said. An oyster is a mollusk. Um, um, if he's a crustacean, said another child. Why's he on land? Shouldn't he be in the water? Bug didn't get to hear the answer to that question. A bell rang. Recess was over. The children ran away. Bye, Krusty! Soon, the playground was empty and quiet. The only sound was the wind in the trees. Bug remained there, motionless, at the playground's edge for a long while. Finally, he said one word aloud to himself. Crustacean. Children tend to be wrong about many things. They say things that hold absolutely no truth at all. In fact, the children who had gathered around Bug that Wednesday afternoon had themselves said several untrue statements in just that week alone. Things like, My dad is ten feet tall. He's not. Once I ate a whole alligator. I don't think you did. My dog can talk. Only to me, though. Hmm, I'm skeptical. Oh, and my favorite. One time, I jumped so high I got stuck in the roof and then a helicopter came and I jumped on it and it took me to Mars. See what I mean? As a rule, it's good to verify information from children. Just to check. Bug checked. He went around to all the other roly-polies he knew. I heard a rumor. Uh, it's probably nothing, but... Are we crustaceans? And he discovered that, at least in this case, the child who had said so authoritatively that Bug was a crustacean was right. Yeah, we are. Pretty sure, yeah. That's what my mom says. Oh, I thought it was pronounced crustaceans. But yes, we are. Bug was stunned. He also tended to be a bit dramatic. So the next few hours went something like this. My life is a lie. How can no one have told me? Who am I? Who am I? No one knew quite what to say. I'm not sure what to say here, said Bug's neighbor, Ramon. I figured you knew. I didn't know. I've been in the dark about my own existence. Eventually, Bug tired himself out. He was exhausted by this unbelievable turn of events. Bug, it doesn't really change anything. This is not a big deal. Bug ambled home, despondent. He collapsed beneath his leaf and fell into a deep sleep. Bug dreamt of the sea. He saw himself swimming through the water amongst his cousins. Shrimp, lobsters, crabs, they were all there, swiveling through the depths. Come, swim with us. Live 
where you belong. You are one of us. It was a miraculous dream. He woke up feeling like he had the answer to every vague question he'd ever had in his whole life. At dawn, the sun rose like a golden gem in the sky, casting a pink glow across the horizon. Bug focused on his goal. He headed down to the puddle. The puddle was a shallow depression in the earth, where rain collected most weeks. Pill bugs, including many of Bug's friends and family, spent a lot of time there. That day, the puddle was low on water, but it was still packed with pill bugs. Bug shook his head dismissively. A puddle? So tragic, he thought to himself. Bug's family and friends lounged on the perimeter of the puddle. Some snacked, some read magazines. Bug's uncle Desmond was asleep, snoring loudly. It was a gorgeous day. The sky was a blue dome above. Geese flew overhead in precise Vs. Bug tried to get everyone's attention. Ahem, he murmured. The pill bugs glanced over. Oh, hey, Bug. How's it going, Bug? Uncle Desmond continued to snore heavily. Today, Bug began dramatically, waiting until they were really paying attention. I shall go to the sea where I belong. Everyone was silent, except for Uncle Desmond, who continued snoring. A pleasant breeze rippled over the land, causing the leaves above to sway in concert. Bug's family began murmuring. Bug, can we discuss this? How about you think it over more, honey? We do not live near the sea. But Bug was already far away, daydreaming of his new life. His usual worries had left his mind. He had found... The answer. It was exhilarating. Farewell, he called and ambled away. Soon, Bug was alone. He had half expected his family and friends to realize they, as fellow crustaceans, were also meant to live in the sea. But apparently they were not ready to face the truth. Bug crawled over sticks and under logs. Then he heard something coming his way. He turned and saw an enormous turtle approaching him. And sitting on the turtle's shell was a pill bug, his friend, Sage. She had been at the puddle. She must have seen the light, Bug thought to himself. Bug, she called from her perch. I'm coming with you. Wonderful. We'll explore the sea together. Sage frowned. Um, no, I'm just going to accompany you there. I I didn't want you to go alone. Bug sighed, (gasps) disappointment spreading over him. Suit yourself, but don't try to stop me. I won't. Just come up here, okay? This is my buddy, Terrence. Hello, said Terrence the turtle. He'll give us a ride. It'll be way faster. Bug considered this for a moment, then decided it would be best to start his new life as soon as possible. He scrambled up Terrence's leg and joined Sage on his shell. They set out towards the sea. Well, they set out towards a lake because they were nowhere close to the sea. As they traveled, Bug reflected on his life and shared those reflections loudly with Sage. We have gills. Why would we have gills if we weren't meant to live in water, huh? Sage didn't know what to say to that. Finally, After three long days, 
Three days filled with dramatic declarations from Bug. And another thing, I've always felt strongly that I'd be a terrific swimmer if given the chance. They arrived at the lake. The two pill bugs scurried down from Terence's shell. Bug, Sage said as they crept to the edge of a log overlooking the water. Yes, Bug said, distracted by the shimmer of the lake's surface. You know there are no shrimp in there, right? I know that, Bug said, but he hadn't known that. It made a question flicker in the recesses of his mind. What else don't you know? He ignored it. There are crayfish in the lake. They're family too, Bug said, improvising. He wasn't certain about the crayfish, but it seemed plausible. Bug, yeah, look, Bug, you belong on... But it was too late. Bug leapt off the log. He dove, and Tenny first, into the water. The water felt glorious. It was so cool and refreshing. Bug felt weightless as he drifted downward. I'm a terrific swimmer, he thought. And then another thought. I'm a pioneer. I've gone where no roly-poly has gone before. I've braved the unknown, and I've triumphed. Bug glanced around the water, trying to locate his distant relatives. But he had poor eyesight, made worse without the sun. He couldn't see any crayfish. He certainly couldn't see any lobsters. In fact, he couldn't see anything at all. He swirled down through the water. That's when Bug realized he was not swimming. He was sinking. Oh no. Bug thought of the children, their laughter, their delight at his ability to curl into a ball. So simple, so effortless, so... Terrestrial. I don't belong here, Bug tried to say, but he couldn't say anything. Everything was murky and green. He felt himself sinking further. Bug felt a sense of dread settle within him. This is all wrong. This is all very, very wrong. It's terrible when you figure these things out too late isn't it? Bug spiraled down, 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 until, just as Bug was thinking things could not possibly get any worse, he was swallowed by a sea creature. Well, he thought he'd been swallowed, but he hadn't been, at least not yet. Inside the creature's mouth, Bug sloshed around. So turbulent was the ride that his thoughts were all muddled. He was focused on surviving, somehow getting out, somehow making it back. Please, Bug gurgled. I belong on... Bug tumbled out of the creature's open mouth onto dry ground. Land, he said. He curled into a ball as he tumbled and rolled until he hit up against Sage. Bug, are you okay? Bug struggled to breathe through his gills. They were much too wet. It took him a minute. Slowly, he uncurled himself and looked up at his friend. Hi, he said. Oh, Bug, I'm glad you're okay. Thank you, Terrence. Terrence? Bug looked over to see Terrence, their turtle taxi dripping wet. Terrence just saved your life. Bug, let that sink in for a moment. Thanks, Terrence, Bug said quietly. 
Terrence nodded. Bug, I thought you were all talk. I didn't think you'd actually jump in the lake. Bug was silent. He looked out over the lake. Its surface glimmered. It was late afternoon. The sun was a bright lamp in the sky. Bug was relieved to feel himself drying out, allowing him to breathe normally. Bug, Sage said, resting beside him. I know what you're gonna say. Oh, really? You're gonna say how silly I was for thinking I could live in a lake. I didn't know. I hadn't been in a lake before. Sage was silent for a moment. Together, they watched as a heron stalked through the water, then lifted into the sky. Bug, we get to live on land. Bug sighed. I know, I know. We have to live on land. No, Sage said. We get to live on land. What do you mean? I mean, living on land is a gift. Look how beautiful it is here. The sun in our backs, the wind, even the children who started you on this whole crustacean thing. They live on land. You can't charm children in the sea. Bug was quiet. He hadn't thought about it that way. How do you know all this? Sage shrugged. I'm observant. Over the next few days, Terence lumbered across the land with the two roly-polies perched on his shell. When they reached home, everyone was overjoyed that Bug had not drowned. You actually jumped in the lake? We didn't think you were serious. Glad to have you back, buddy. Did you go somewhere? That was Uncle Desmond, who had finally woken up. Over the next few days, Bug tried to come to terms with everything that had happened. He had been so sure he'd figured out his life. Now he felt lost at sea. Well, not at sea, literally. That hadn't worked out. He felt lost, confused. Adrift. On the fourth day, Bug was eating a leaf at the outskirts of the school playground when a group of children surrounded him. Bug usually came to the playground at a different time, and he hadn't encountered these particular children before. One child spotted him. Hey, it's a roly poly! And soon there was a circle of smiling children around him. Bug dutifully curled himself into a ball when they prodded him, and he felt overjoyed when he heard their laughter. He looked around, taking in the warm sun, the soft breeze, the delicious leaf, the happy children. And a thought came to Bug. This is where I belong. I think we all have our own moments of being Bug. Of thinking, wait a minute, what if I meant to live a totally different life? Sometimes it's true, and sometimes it's really not. I hope you enjoyed this story. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house tech director, Peter Kay, runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Thank you to my Little Stories premium subscribers, who are making it possible for me to continue sharing stories with children around the world. 
Thank you to Ezra and Fiona for this super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you to Ezra for sparking the idea for this story. And thank you so much to the Little Stories Premium subscribers who supplied sound effects used in this story. Thank you to Clay, Zara, River, Martin, Walter, Wesley, Remy, Arlo, Nina, Margot, Iris, Sloane, Zemi, Cora, Lyra, Sebastian, Malcolm, Oliver, Ada, Emilia, Dean, Elsa, Kenji, and Kimiko. If you loved this story, please share it with your friends. So many of my listeners have heard about the podcast from someone else who just loves it. So please spread the word if you can and tell your friends about the show. And thank you, as always, for listening in.